Hello everyone, this is Richard K from Price Action and Income. And in today's video, I want to talk a bit about the importance of multiple time frame analysis and why it is a good idea to include it in your own analysis and trading decision. Now, as you all know, time frames, as displayed on a trading chart, are simply a visual representation of what price was doing over a given time frame, depending on the choice of your time setting. Traders will typically have a favorite time frame that they trade from, and whether they are swing trading, day trading, or even scalping. But any good strategy should, in my opinion, at least include a higher time frame, and other than the one that you're entering from, that acts as a bigger picture view so that you are aware of important technical levels before you formulate an entry plan. And as a rule of thumb, larger time frames will typically have stronger support or resistance levels. When you look at something like perhaps momentum divergence, then momentum divergence showing up on a larger time frame will obviously be a stronger sign of weakness than let's say a lower time frame might show. It is always a good idea to employ a top-down approach when you start analyzing your charts, starting from a higher time frame and then moving down to your lower time frames. And if you have a good idea of where important levels, like support and resistance for example, are on a higher time frame, then that should help you with your trading decisions. Now what I mean by all of this is that you definitely do not want to be taking an entry going into a larger time frame support or resistance level. But if you believe price might be heading towards such a level and there is enough space to take a trade that offers a decent reward versus the risk you are taking on before price gets there, then obviously that's a better decision. Many novice traders will take trades and not have a clue of what's going on in a higher time frame and lose money. So today I will not be talking about strategy that much, but rather show you how I tend to analyze my charts using a top-down approach from a higher to a lower time frame before I formulate my entry plan. Today I'll be looking at the spot price of gold. And since we are talking about multiple time frame analysis, I will start with a weekly time frame and proceed to mark out important levels and use some market geometry tools to show me where price is within the bigger picture. So the first line I had active on my chart for quite a while was this important load that formed around 20th of October 2008 and just drawing a simple trend line I connected that with an important low that formed in about the 23rd of November 2015 and you'll see that recently price has actually tested that uh, back in August last year which was a very important low as you'll see later on and price continued trading higher. The next tool I like to use quite often are my FIB retracement levels and by simply selecting the high back in August 2011 and connecting that to that important low which I connected my trend line to back in November 2015 and you will see as price created this low he had a hard time at first about July 2016 about to break through the 0.382% Fibonacci level. Price came down nearly tested that level again, moved down into this important low on the, I think it was about 26th of August, 13th of August 2018, and price has since moved higher and had no problem breaking through that level to the upside. Now looking at where price is actually currently trading at, just above the 1500 level, I then obviously would like to know where a previous important low, which was broken before, would have been which would then probably act as a resistance level. And if you look at this formation we have on the left hand side here, and we draw a horizontal line, drop it into those lows, let's use the closing prices as well, then you'll see that price is actually within a weekly and a very important weekly resistant area. And this is what I've been talking about previously. If you were already long going into this resistance level, then um, yeah, you could probably expect a correction lower. Price might very well shoot through that level, maybe even go as high as the 0.618% level. But in my opinion, if you were long going up into this high, then you should probably be thinking about taking profits or be very cautious about what you do. Maybe take a more intraday approach in trading 
and but still be aware that you are at some very important resistance levels taken from a weekly time frame. Then the fourth drawing tool, which is a market geometry tool, named the shift pitchfork, and you also get a standard pitchfork. I prefer to use a shift pitchfork in my own work. And if I draw a shift pitchfork using that important loan from here to the high in July 2016, back into the low of December 2016, which was also an important low, then you'll see that price is actually currently trading right at the upper median line, which is a pretty strong resistance area, in my opinion, if you're a fan of using pitchforks. And obviously, this is also in conjunction with this very important lows that we have over here. Just take note here, guys, that most of these lines, apart from these resistant lines, I had some ones at lower previous important swings using the swing lower. I have most of these lines drawn back in 2017 already. So since this was on a weekly chart, I had a pretty good idea where price structure was within the confines of this uh, pitchfork that I've drawn that's been sloping to the upside. And it wasn't actually until about 2018 that I started thinking price was going to probably reverse higher when we had a reaction from this lower median line. And there was also obviously a touch of this uh, strong support area from my trend line. Let me just open up the chart a little bit. There was some more confirmation that we might have had an important low by using this swing and that swing over there and then swinging it to a standard pitchfork setting. And this is the beauty of market geometry, guys. If you see that Although price undershot this lower median line and this upward sloping trend line, it reached the lower red warning line, which is another extension line that I draw on my pitchfork using, in this case, a standard pitchfork. Price actually touched that lower red warning line to the T and started moving upwards. Now, I really like using pitchforks in my own analysis because they work really well at attracting price and knowing where to set targets. So when I thought a low was in place back here in August last year, I knew that if I wanted to trade to the upside, that price would probably stand a very good chance to, at the very least, test these previous highs, or at least make it to my center median line, or perhaps even higher. So once I got my directional bias sorted out, in this case, wanting to trade to the upside, I then start moving to my lower time frames. And the time frames I like using are the 4-hour, 30 minute and the 5 minutes, which I used to time my entries. Now the first trade I was really interested in taking only came around late April this year. And what I like to do is use my Fibonacci extension levels. In this case, I use these swings here. And after price reached the 1.786% Fibonacci extension, we actually had a pretty large long-term correction moving lower. And from here, you can see that at the stage we were dealing with the first wave down. And when you normally see a strong wave down like this, followed by, in this case, a lower high, that you can expect price to, at the minimum, either test this level or break it. And in this case, we were dealing with a sort of an ending diagonal C wave, which ended right here around, oh, what was 2nd of May? I actually took this low on the 23rd of April. And because there was then enough space to at least reach these previous highs, I could place a target over there. Price had no issue reaching that first target and even went as far as my second target, which was targeting the center median line of my longer term shift pitchfork that we've drawn on the weekly chart. And another strong technical indication came in when I had pretty decent momentum divergence on my four hour chart as shown over here. Price was moving downwards into the slow and price actually or the momentum started driving up considerably from starting from quite decent amount of momentum and slowly drying up as price came into the slow over here. Now if you were to switch to a 30 minute chart which is another chart that I look at and we go back to the same low over there. 
just open up the chart for you guys then you'll see that we had slight momentum divergence going into the slow over here uh, which is actually the entry that I took and price actually completed this correction much later on the 2nd of May and this time on a 30 minute chart on very strong momentum divergence so these are the sort of things that I have to look at when price reaches levels that I think are a good entry level to, to trade from. But I also like to see my momentum divergence as a additional filter or let's say indication that the timer is ripe to take an entry. The second noticeable price pattern that I've started tracking <coughs> started at the high about 25th of June when price sliced straight through the center median line of my long term pitchfork that I drew on my weekly time frame and created what we call a symmetrical triangle. Trading a symmetrical triangle requires quite a bit of patience um, because you quite often need to wait until the E wave, as I labeled over here, completes. And But what these patterns do make so great to trade is that they really, really offer low risk entry opportunities if you know what to look for. And uh, without going too much into the strategy again, but uh, we had what we call an A, B, C, D, E, price contracting from the left to the right. And after the D wave what the, it was in, it was just time to wait for the E wave. Uh, price came down. Always expect a second leg to, to, to appear after the first one, which is, should form a lower high, which it did in this case. The price came down. It just pipped the previous low right at the 0.618% FIP retracement level, at which stage it was time to find an entry and the rest was history. Price just shot straight back upwards and the target could be placed at the previous highs with a very low risk entry and price has since had no issue reaching the upper median of my weekly shift pitchfork. And this is really where the question now becomes, do I want to take another long position? But the answer for me is no. I already extracted profits from this market. And those resistant lines and levels to me are major technical levels that I will respect. I can bet you that there are a lot of people blindly jumping into positions simply because the market is trending strongly upwards. And price might very well go much higher. But I will have to wait for that confirmation first before I consider trading gold again. Alright guys, so the next time you want to trade please take a step back and view the bigger picture and know where your market is trading in relation to a higher time frame, like the weekly for example. It depends on what your trading approach might be and a higher time frame like the weekly might not be relevant to you. But if you are trading from a small time frame then it's always a good idea to at least know where you are in relation to a time frame that is at least three to four times higher than your trading or entry time frame. Okay guys, that's it from me today. I hope that you liked today's video and I would really appreciate it if you can leave a like below this video and hit the subscribe button for more insightful videos in the near future. Until next time, this is Richard K from Price Action and Income. Goodbye.